This is going to be a video about brain cells, and I've just got a bunch of items here that I'm going to use to sort of create some analogies here. And I'm doing this because in the uh, homework on brain cells, I asked people to give an analogy to explain, help explain and understand what uh, uh, what experience expectant and experience dependent cells might be and uh, most people instead of giving an analogy actually just gave examples like from the textbook so an analogy means I want you to compare things to uh, other things out there in the world so it's more like a metaphor so the uh, one that I'm going to look at first here is I'm going to look at a key uh, a key is an example for me of an experience expectant brain cell an analogy because you see all of these little lines and everything in the key and the little ridges. Those are made uh, so that there is a, a keyhole that is actually expecting this key to go in in a very specific way. Uh, and that keyhole and the key together are experience expectant. You can't take this tub of flour and walk over to a keyhole and push it toward it and expect something to happen. Uh, but the design of this specific thing is set up so that one expects the other. So if, uh, if you were thinking about this as being a pair of brain cells, this and the keyhole, when the key goes in the keyhole, there would be chemical activity in the brain. And when that happened uh, more than once, then it would start to myelinate around that synapse so that that would, uh, experience expectance. When that uh, expected thing begins to happen, uh, then the brain starts to act around it and myelinate the um, you know, create that sheath around the synapse that, that that's there so it becomes more and more permanent. So what else is experience expectant? What is designed so that it, when uh, the thing happens that it's designed for, uh, it, it, you know, it gets reinforced and happens again uh, and that, uh, that becomes strengthened. So let's think about a fork. Uh, a fork has a very specific design and I can do it wrong. I can grab the fork like this and then try to do things with it, and maybe I can do some things with it, but the moment I grab this fork and I do what it was intended to, designed to do, and pick up some pieces of food and use them that way, then that, it means that this specific design here is experience expectant. Uh, as soon as uh, that thing that it was designed for happens, it's going to get reinforced and strengthened and so on. Same thing with a spoon, I could grab it like this and it won't do what it's expected to do, but think about both of these things. And the knife, super clear once you've done it that this handle thing is supposed to be grabbed. So, and you can find handles like this on dozens and dozens of things that are just the right size and shape for a human hand to, to go around them and handles on suitcases and uh, backpacks and other things tend to be about this size uh, for that reason. So uh, experience expectant handles are expected to be grabbed like that. So uh, let's think uh, then, oh, let's see, we've got a couple of other things here, glasses. Uh, there's really a clear design here on most glasses set up for this to fit over the nose these to fit over the ears, but, you know, I can clearly put these over my shoulder if I want to. Uh, I can do anything with those glasses, but it's not going to get reinforced and strengthened until I do the thing with them that it's expecting me to do, which is to put them on my nose and ears. Let's see. This container set up with a specific shape. A container is a really good example of an experience expectant uh, cell. So it's just waiting for things to go in here. It's pretty natural to put things inside of that shape. Uh, but also, do you see these little threads around the edge here? Those are meant for and are waiting for me to do this kind of thing. And and uh, doing it with one hand. As soon as I start screwing that on, uh, the threads on the inside of the blue lid are going to match up with those threads on the clear container, and I'm going to get uh, a match the same way that I get with a, a key and a keyhole. So uh, that's experience expectant. Um, 
a shirt is also experience expectant. It's uh, just a big piece of cloth and you could do all sorts of things with it, but uh, it's been designed with these specific one, two, three, four holes uh, for things to happen a very specific way with this, uh, with this cloth. So when those specific things happen and they happen correctly, it's reinforced, it gets strengthened and so on. So uh, all of these would be examples of experience expectant uh, neurons, cells in your brain that are just waiting for something to happen. Uh, and uh, some of those things are like, uh, you know, sounds. Uh, there's probably areas in the brain that are just waiting for you to hear phonemes, uh, speech sounds, and as soon as uh, your brain starts to distinguish those, it gets stronger and stronger. And just look in your textbook. There are certain areas uh, of the brain that are, uh, that are uh, noted as being experience expectant, and their growth just depends on those first initial experiences of putting the key into the hole and things just sort of start to cascade from there. Those cells proliferate, they myelinate, they strengthen and so on. Experience dependent cells uh, would not be so specific as a key waiting for them to happen. They're the kinds of cells that will grow uh, and proliferate and myelinate, but they're waiting to see what kinds of experiences you have with them, waiting to see what you do, waiting to see what you make. And so let's just think about going from the shirt to this big piece of cloth that we bought when we were in French Polynesia a few years ago in Tahiti. Bought this big piece of cloth and uh, in Tahiti that piece of cloth could be used for dozens of things. It could be a tablecloth, it could be a pareoi which is wrapped around you like a, uh, a skirt. Uh, it could be a, uh, used as a towel, it could be wrapped around your head, uh, all sorts of things, and it can even be used you know, to clean things, wipe things up or whatever. So uh, just this basic piece of cloth is more experience dependent. Uh, so if you think about that as a brain cell, the, those brain cells are waiting to see what you do with them. So do you wrap it around yourself? If you wrap it around yourself and that's reinforcing and helpful, then that uh, synapse will get strengthened over time. The second time you do it, it'll get stronger. The third time you do it, it'll get stronger. And that synapse will get myelinated in a sheath and become more permanent. Uh, think about that with not the container, which is probably an experience expectant, but the flower inside here. I can do all kinds of things with flour. And when I do something that's really useful for me, uh, that useful thing that I've done is going to get synapses firing around it, and then that's going to get myelinated and strengthened as well. Same thing could happen with salt. I can do all kinds of things with salt, uh, and when an experience happens that ends up being uh, useful and uh, reinforced for me, uh, that use of salt and that uh, experience that it's depending on will get strengthened. I've got clay right here. Uh, clay, like flour, could have uh, all sorts of different uses, all sorts of different things I could make out of it. When I make a specific thing out of it that changes it from this, you know, unrecognizable blob into something that's recognizable and wanted, then that clay uh, has been used for a specific purpose. But uh, I can make anything with it. So my brain is waiting to see what I will do with something like clay, and then when it does something that ends up being reinforcing or helpful or useful, then, uh, and I do it more than once, if I keep doing it, uh, then uh, the brain is going to say, okay, we're going to make a, a myelinated synapse for that, to, to keep that synapse in place and going forward. So those are some analogies. Uh, what do you think about glue? Is glue experience expectant or experience dependent? Is it something that's waiting for a really specific thing or is it something that you could figure out, you know, oh, I can do whatever I want with it? Let's go over to the materials covered here. Got all sorts of things in here. Glue sticks, markers, crayons, envelopes, hole punch or uh, paint, different kinds of paints. Uh, you know, which ones of these things are going to be experience expectant and experience dependent? 
Uh, so uh, experience expectant things have really specific designs and when they get used for those specific designs uh, that synapse is going to get myelinated, hardened, uh, made permanent. Uh, but experience dependent things are just waiting to see what you'll do with them. And if you do them more than once, if you repeat them, they're reinforcing, then you're going to get that myelination that happens around them. So these ones are clearly, you know, more flexible. And these ones are a little bit more rigid. And these ones, the experience expectant ones, probably much more governed by processes like evolution over time, uh, advantaging specific keys and keyholes that you know open up possibilities for you to survive and be active as a human. So those are some of my ideas about uh, brain cells and uh, I'll give you some activities to do with this to think about it a little bit more.